Well, uh, hello everyone, welcome to our Jena seminar. Uh, it's not good uh, to have focus on much. To have focus on team, those games to give us the heart. Uh, well, she, okay. Uh, let me have caution. <laughs> Okay, Professor uh, Dorsky will discuss for the normal mode and real references, mathematicians, Yes, Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. So, I have a lot of notes in the resonance because I am under an impression that there is some interesting notes out here. But probably, because it's a mathematician's perspective, it will be somewhat disappointing because if I understand correctly, people would like to see cases in which quasi normal modes and the well resonance are the same thing, but are closely related. But in mathematics, at least for us, we have more of confidence from the analogy between quasi normal modes and scattering resonances than they were able to produce examples where they actually coincide. But let me start, so, so please stop me, you know, and, and I don't know exactly how I should have gauged this talk. So one motivation, a classical motivation for studying uh, scattering resonances is the <clears throat> decay of waves. And the simplest example of that, there's a lot of writing here, but it's just a three-dimensional scattering outside of an object of the most space. And you just study the wave equation outside, say with zero boundary condition on the obstacle. And one, one can ask a question whether one has uh, decay of local energy. So, what that means is that you can start with some, say, compactly supported initial data that looks at the energy in some compact set. Is, does it decay exponentially? But with the control given by the initial and the, and the fact which is now classical, well, actually, maybe it's a little more complicated, but is that this, uh, we have exponential decay of energy, even only if the geometric condition is satisfied, then the obstacle is non trapping So non trapping is the is the broken, broken flow, it's the straight lines, which reflect from the obstacle. None of them stick around. In this example, it's non trapping, but if I would take, say, say, are there not at all the truths? Then, of course, it becomes trapping because you start having it just bounce back. And this is a now, you can say, classical result. It was actually the thesis of Jim Rolston, even though it has been, has been many adaptations. In GR, it was adopted by Spears about 10 years ago to obtain you know, similar results. And sorry, to show that in case of trapping, you do not have exponential decay. And uh, on the other hand, so to show that if an obstacle is non trapping, and that goes through various developments initiated by Lux Phillips and they find that again from time ago. But you know, there are many new results, so, for instance, a recent result which was motivated by some numerical considerations was to find the best concept here in this estimate and the compact sense. So, there are many things there that are still left. So, so as I just said, that you know, we have an exponential decay of energy, which that I can cite with a control only depending on the initial energy. If the obstacle is not trapped. So here are two simple examples with some waves from the from from lab of high frequency scattering. On the left hand side, there is a disk showing the plane wave reflected by it, which is not trapping. And on the right hand side is a trapping situation, but that's the mild trapping. And you know, the difference between mild trapping is, for instance, this type of thing. Would have very strong trapping, lots of rays between these elliptic rays which are trapped. 
in this situation, well, this is not an example, an example of strictly hyperbolic flow, but there is some hyperbolic flow, so trap is relatively small. So I just, as I said, the theory of propagation of singularities with the wave equation was developed by any of those in the same basis. And in the mount trapping, um, maybe roughly speaking, trapping like identified by say several convex bodies, and there has been more recent progress that I mean, they are not survey. But in that case, I just want to say that the energy still decays exponentially. However, you pay a price. You cannot estimate it purely in terms of the energy of the data. So, so in that case, roughly speaking, you have an estimate of mild trapping. And that's the situation which occurs for black holes is the constraint. In that case, this decays exponentially, but you have to have some extra information about the initial data. You, you, you lose a, a little bit. <coughs> And, and that kind of a cost of this exponential exponential trapping. So, so you know, probably the quasi-normal mode so what we call scattering resonances come in. Well, they come in as you know, you can actually if you have a non-trapping situation or a mildly trapping situation, data. What you have is an expansion of solutions of the wave equation, which is a solution of the wave equation, in terms of models. So this is sort of the same as, as you know, with the string heavy uh, in terms of eigenvalues. Except now these lambda j's have real and imaginary, uh, imaginary parts. And in the case of obstacle scattering, but also in many cases, including, say, characteristics of black holes, they are characterized nicely using the green function. And the green function is a solution of the stationary wave equation. So that's the green equation which is obtained by taking the Fourier transfer of the time. And then you look at the false problem. And uh, you can solve this equation, provide so in the upper half plane, imagine part of lambda is positive, but then this, this is an invertible operator. And, and so then you have a, a kernel. A g, a g of x by uh, lambda, and, and, and this kernel is uniquely determined by saying that this is actually a solution which takes you from L to delta to L to uh, u, uh, when imagining about the that was positive, and the poles, and it has a metamorphic continuation, and these poles are the lambda j's which appear in this expansion. So just to maybe fix it, just to, to sort of pretty find the simplest possible case, the simplest possible case is the Laplacian so that is minus Vx squared on R. And in that case, G of uh, x, y, lambda is equal to e to the i lambda x minus y divided by i lambda. So you see here that Imagine part of lambda is positive. This is an extremely nice operator. But if you start continuing below, this is no longer a bounded operon on L2 because this is now exponentially growing. And in that case, we just have one pole and zero. So, so, so in, in, in the free case, if you like in one dimension, there's only one resonance and it's catching pole at, at zero. <coughs> So, so this is sort of a general, general fact. And, uh, and you know, so, so you, can, you can look at this expansion. And here, you know, for your entertainment, do it. Sorry? Yes, but I'm trying to unmute. I can't unmute for some reason. I'm to get late for you. Okay. It's not plain. Something to do. Do not mute. I, I can. Sorry. I have boss card over the camera. Sorry. You know, we'll show the video. Sorry. Yeah, you can just uh, that's uh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Well, you know, sorry. <coughs> oh, unmute. Oh, I should unmute. Hey, unmute. Okay, well, let's try. 
No, it won't let me unmute. No, I cannot unmute. Some some other technology, I may just say so. F12. I don't see F12 here. I don't have F12. I have a I have a button that is blocked. Well, how huh? sorry? Yeah, it's newer ones. Well, in any case, so sorry. Each of this is supposed to sound, but I'm not going to play for it. You see, because they have imaginary values and real values. This is embedding movies into PDF files. It's a very cheap business. I, of course, have professional help here in this version. You see, real part is this. This is the ones which are here. And, and the ones, once it starts going into the complex, then you, you, you sort of start going, you know, you, you, you lose your, your high pitch and it becomes down to down. It's a pretty cool sound if we could hear it. <laughs> but, um, so that's sort of, no. Okay, so, sorry. Okay, so another, uh, sorry, so another way to look at it is to take, for instance, an example which is related to the type of things which occur for, for black holes. Yes. And in this case, we have exponential decay of waves. Well, in this case, it, it's a potential. You see that the lot of energy decays exponentially. But if you rescale the solution by this decay, you see that it actually has this nice symmetry property. So this is. <coughs> so what happens in this case is that you have um, the lambda j is the poles of the screen function in this case. The dominant ones are here, and the rest of them actually are created by the cutoff of the singularity. Eventually, this stuff's flying, so it's not perfectly smooth here. Um, there's a bunch of things called by the connection of similarities. But what you really hear and see, and even that is already very tricky, is uh, this too, and that's the expansion of the solution. So in the previous movie, uh, Peter took away this factor, and that's why he saw this nice oscillatory profile the change. Maybe I'll show you again. You see, this is the this is this chop I'm after taking away the exponential. So this uh, can be um, done for also various classes of non compact supported potential. So one that's sort of relevant, relevant in, in uh, 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 for linearized gravitational waves for a structural black hole is the Reg Wheeler equation, Reg Wheeler potential which is this potential here. And this potential has the property that it has an algebraic decay in one direction near the, yeah, so this is in the Schultz case, near the, uh, near the cosmological horizon, an exponential decay near the event horizon. And, um, and in this case, again, Peter made a movie, and I don't know, I, I, some physical constants can be In any case, you see this type of thing. At first, the wave comes out, and then, of course, there is a reader, which is the, the tech, can be expanded in terms of the buzzing of the point. Mathematically, strictly speaking, in the case of the sitter like polygraph, so of course, you know. And you, 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 in a sort of idealized setting, and, and that was supposedly the original motivation in the seventies was to look for for the ring now, which would be some observer sitting here and then measuring the altitude of the detector here. So this was motivation supposedly for this. Though at the end, of course, the main signal does not come from the ring down, but from the, the collision of the thing. And then there has been a lot of work on this, some of the other ones, particularly. So, a very different setting, 
but but geometrically uh, sharing some dynamical analogies and i want to mention is that of hyperbolic portions and one one uh, example of that is um, portions by thin groups so the group is thin in some sense is small and if the group is small then the portion by this group is big so this is a case of the this is a group which is generated by some reflection with respect to circles. And the fundamental domain is this bluish region. And it has this very big ends. And in that case, the analog of, say, the Laplacian outside of the, uh, outside of the convex body of the potential uh, Schrodinger operator is the Laplacian, if one wants to look at it at high frequencies, is the Laplacian on the hyperbolic uh, surface a minus one quarter because the continuous spectrum of this guy starts at one point. And in that case, you have, there's a convention from uh, it's sort of origins in Selberg, I suppose, that rather than look at the resonance in the lower half, then you change it. This parameter that they can have, then they did the right hand, the like, left hand. Like. So, so this is just a, 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 I mean, we, we don't need to worry about this. And there has been many works on understanding of resonances, sketching resonances in the setting, and uh, analogies with the others in the situations of sketching by similar complex bodies, dynamic. It's a quite close analogy. And in this case, actually, this is actually the only case that I personally know in which the resonance or scattering resonances or analog quasi non modes with names coincide with something like the well resonances. Because in this case, they are exactly the zeros of the self zeta function. And the self zeta function is a close relative of the well zeta function. The, the, this case where the poles of the well zeta function are, uh, I mean, the, the well zeta function is expressed using things like this. I get it wrong. Sorry. Help me. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Do it this way. But in any case, this is a uh, bit bold. This is something I want to check. So that's my thing. And uh, and it's true. There are various generalizations that have go. Yeah. And, and this analogy actually is valid also for finite body portions, and in particular, you know, the most famous finite body portions is the modular surface, uh, in which case the group is the cell to Z. And in, in that case, the resonances of the Laplacian on the modular surface coincide with the zeros of the Laplacian function. So, this unfortunately. So the Riemann hypothesis is that you must have heard of, says that the rates of decay of the, the modular surface are either zero, so they don't decay, or exactly one, which is the resonances of the critical line. And of course, and this 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 was this was emphasized this analogy in the uh, Max Phillips even had a chance in this type of how not to prove the Riemann hypothesis. And in fact, uh, in the case of the data function, we probably know more about those residents than we know about any other ones except some simple situations. So here are just some examples of how those things look like. They, they have a lot of interesting structure. And this is uh, 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 in, in parameterize the scale of peril. Hands uh, by by the length, so this is where the length are the same, and this is when you change the length a little bit, 
can see the instability of this, um, which is a well known phenomenon. And here is another example where the trapping is stronger. And again, different type of handles and even a tiny change changes the structure of the scattering resonances. And, and there are some explanations recently about uh, these other structures. Yeah. You know, what creates those regular chains, at least in highly symmetric examples. So now, uh, to, to, to have, you know, I, I, I mentioned well resonances, now let me mention well resonances more rigorously. So, a setting which I would like to start with is the contact and loss of flows. So, I will not give a definition of the contact and loss of flow, but I'll just give a you know, definition by example, which makes sense to about, which is which is uh, the result of, um, of um, cost of the sphere value. Okay, so, I have a contact. In my so your dimension n, then we have the uh, cost of value. So this is the center of points in the tangent space of m. So if you do it, but this is the base point, so it's like the fiber point, such that the imaginary length of this effort takes as well. And uh, a GDC flow is defined on this um, sphere boundary and it's generator of generator flow. And uh, sorry, it, 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 it's a, a tautology. So, so it has a generator, it generates it. And uh, this, um, this uh, uh, the, 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 I assume that this uh, uh, manifold is negatively curved. In that case, the flow is like the density property. That's an example of a contact and loss of flow. And I won't give you a definition of this, this system. So, this is an example. And in that case, the propagator, in a sense, like the wave propagator, in the case of, of uh, the scattering theory of gravitational, linearized gravitational waves, is an operator which takes smooth functions to smooth functions, but to function to function. This actually has a preserved measure. I took a cost here bundle. I, I am I always prefer the cost here bundle. And the propagator here is just a pullback by the flow. So it seems like a very innocent uh, operator. Uh, and you know, just like uh, the Laplace, the wave equation. Is obtained by taking exponential to the i t slope of motion. Here, yeah, this is actually an operator which has the same property, which I said, um, and making several joint of the amount of i, then it's exactly e to the i t x. If I take x to be one of the i times the joint. And one of the questions, which is like the question of exponential decay of waves that I mentioned before. Is the question of decay of correlations, namely, take your function, x is this compromise, you pull it back by the flow, and you test the case. That's what one measures of the waves. You run it away, and then I start with some initial data, and then I test it somewhere else to see what is happening. And one of the kind of basic questions in this business is. Uh, whether you have exponential decay of correlations. So in this case, you always have a resonance of zero. So there will always be a term in this like expansion we showed you before waves, which is this little term, plus exponential. Plus exponential. Well, the question depends, but it was known for, um, it was known for constant curvature, but only about 25 years ago, uh, the pieces of topic yet, it was resolved for negatively curved surfaces. And eventually, Iberali proved it for contact and loss of flows. And Suji obtained not quite an estimate of this gamma, 
but an expansion, just like for, we have for, for, for scattering waves, plus the magnetic remainder in that expansion. So we see the previous setting, so this wave equation, previous setting, not quite, because I only mentioned the Schwarzschild platform, but this probably I don't need to tell you about this in a black hole initiative placement. Uh, uh, the, the situation is kind of the same. You know, we, we could look at our space uh, to be uh, just uh, the space, the region between the two event horizons, and look at the propagator, and then uh, ask exactly the same question, which will supply the result. The difficulty of not to consider is the problem that in that case, you do not have as strong uh, analytic continuation uh, as in the three different scale case. You don't have a strong continuation process as in the sitter case. And in the sitter case, we also have the resonance of zero. And this is responsible for you know, this cycle, which is exactly the same. So you see, this may be a, a disappointment. Um, but for us, <laughs> the analogy and the analogy is stronger than just sort of these two things. And if, uh, for us, the study of the weather resonance was much facilitated by exploring the analogy that scattering did and the theory of scattering resonances as you know, as in the Sorry, you is you. That's the way propagate. So this would be, you know, I take my, my uh, in this case, I would just take, uh, it's a, it, 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 it gives the station, it's a station that takes space time, so I have some time, and I just look at the, and I know there are various subtleties about which time I think that the said time so actually works. I'm sorry? It is a U is not in the no, but this U is not this U is not differential operator either. So you see U, let me explain the main equation. You see U of T for the main equation, U of T is equal to R T is growing function. The input, so this is main. And also U of T is equal to T. I mean that my signs, you know, unless I think that I I know I'll write this. Uh, over i, over i x is the generate of the problem. Now observe that this operator here, that is a separate drawing of it. I am not in the case of an osmosis flows, in this uh, case of electricity flows, I have a preserved measure. So what happens is that this actually is a separate drawing. If I divide the generator by R, then it's so okay. So formally, it's not so good. You are exponentially differential. You would say that this is a complicated operator and this is a very simple operator. However, we are interested in sort of global properties of the solutions of the vector. And that's not uh, uh, simple, that's you know, the unit of systems. So we have these two, these two uh, settings, and the the result looks the same. So what do these, uh, what do the two problems have in common? And the key thing that they have in common is that they have a normally hyperbolic trap set. So what is a trap set? Well, I'll say it in a moment. So a trap set is just a set of all trajectories which do not stay in a compact set. So for instance, if I would look at this situation here, and I would look at the trap set, and I would say, I want to look at the zero energy, but it's been zero energy. But in this case, the zero energy is not a, we, we, that actually is not a good thing to consider in this case, but it's actually this more interesting, because you see, if I would say on a compact, it's not, uh, let me not, not go with it. 
is the way to be kept. But let's let's talk about this guy here. What's the classical classical observer from say quantum mechanical point of view behind this operator X? Well, what it is is that this operator one over I X is in fact what we you know call it one quantization of a classical observable. And this classical observable is simply the simple pairing of the covector psi with the vector index. That's a function of the cotangent. And then, for instance, you can look at the energy surface P to zero and ask yourself which trajectories on P to zero do not escape to infinity. But they say, but not infinity, I'm on a compact magical. Yes, but now this is taking place in phase space. So I'm now working on the cotangent bundle of the cosphere bundle. And this has an infinity in the fiber direction side. And then it's an exercise to see that the trap set of, on the zero set of this classical observer P is exactly the zero set side of this cotangent. Actually, that's a very, I'm not a bad example. It's not one that you want to use. Yeah, because I'll say it. And, and I will say what I normally have for a trap service. So, to us at least, in the work that, say, Simon Diatlan was doing in Russia and it, and so on, the, 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 the structure is a photo sphere, photo in, in phase space. So, not just a position, but also direction. Go. has the structure of only and what I find is not being maybe a specialist in dynamic systems kind of a miraculous thing that under some mild assumption which are certainly satisfied with black holes the norm is normally have to structure is stable under perturbations you change your metric a little bit you get a different track set this is does not project any photons, nice photons here. Yeah. But this property stays, which is not there. So I'll tell you what not only breaks is in the moment. And in both cases, because of this normal hyperbolic structure, we have we have a strip with finitely many quasi-normal models or well resources. And in this case, in, in, in well. That, that is quite special. They also have in common the fact that zero is the resonance that explains this. And I wanted to say that normally hyperbolic sets are also very common in molecular dynamics. So I want to have plenty of references. Yes, but it's going to be So, how does this work for the Cosphere Bank? So that was actually emphasized by Tsuji and Forshestra 10 years ago. So you see, this is now a rewrite of what I said. So you see, I, I, I have my geodesic flow, which is given by, it's, a, it's generated by V. I then have the pullback by the flow, which is just like this propagator. We put an H here because we are uh, Simon and I and Shrestra. But of course, in this case, P is just, uh, I mean, this is almost, uh, actually, you can mind it actually in this way. It's H over the times this. But, you know, shredding the propagator is like that. Um, and to the minus, strictly speaking. And this is the classical observer. And the key object is a scattering theory, scatter trap set. Trap set is the set of points on the energy surface which do not escape to infinity. In this case, the infinity is the xi infinity. See that here we are compact in, in position. This is S star of n, compact set, but we have this non compact direction xi, and this is worthless escape. And that's scattering theory. That's the analogy. So, and the total trap set is the union of these guys. And as long as we stay away from zero, that is actually a smooth vector. 
which is an important thing. And in fact, the gap, the, the reason for the fact that we have this gap, an exponential k, is closely linked to the symplectic, the, 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 the symplectic form restrictiveness is not the truth. So now is the definition of the uh, normally hyperbolic uh, set, and namely uh, that you know the tangent space. So we have this k, which could be uh, does not need to be very regular. In the case of curve, uh, curve is uh, it is very regular. Curve, it's not different. It's uh, dynamic. The the that so traps it is, is smooth, uh, but. In the case of an osseflows, it's very rough. Well, very rough. But what happens here is that the tangent space has a decomposition. Uh, uh, in, uh, sorry, has the, the, the tangent space to the cotangent space of X, in this case, X is a star of thing, has a decomposition into the tangent space to the scale delta. And to the simplex manifold. And then it has two components. And along these components, you have either exponential growth or exponential decay. So the example, graph schematic example, is given by this picture here. The chart set would be the y axis. And then this would be the state of unstable directions. That's the structure of normal height. So this is why, you see, you take the bottom sphere, the short shape, which is very physical sphere. Then, on one hand, you have hyperbolicity, but on the other hand, you know, we know that if you have hyperbolicity, you cannot have closed orbits. But in fact, the whole photosphere is foliated, you know, every orbit of the photosphere is closed orbit. So you have family of closed orbits. However, in a normal direction to the photosphere, you have a decomposition that in one direction it's it's the game, <coughs> one direction it's, it's gone. And so it's sort of hyperbolic in the normal directions to the trap set. And this actually implies this presence of a spectral gap, and it actually can be can be estimated using a kind of Yakima exponent of the flow on this trap set. So I now want to say, well, how, what, what do we get out of this from, from classical dynamics and resonances? So you see, in classic, in, here is an example, the, not one that we were able to study so far. I think that there is. An example of a chaotic billiard, the Sinai billiard. A billiard, Sinai billiard would be, we put up, yes, a money mortgage billiard. And you see that even though we started with some organized group of particles, after a while, not only uh, they they look like you know uniformly distributed, and they, they were until they disappeared. And so, and of course, one can ask questions, and that is the question that's related to this gamma: How long do we have to wait to have uniform distribution? And also, are there periodic orbits? And what can we say about the information? Oops, sorry. So recently, there has been work by by Valadi, uh, Demers, and Viverani on on billions. Oops. So, so this is maybe you know what I wanted to to, to say about you know, well, resonance is that that um, the object that's of interest to mathematician because it allows one to insist to count the number of periodic orbits is the world zeta function. It's an analog. Of the zeta function, what you do, you replace prime numbers by exponential the length of prime closed duties or close to close to a period. Of which, despite the fact that this part of the problem, there is an awful lot in this problem, and you get information about, for instance, how fast uh, you, uh, you you decay to this equilibrium to this equidistribution level. From information that can be obtained from the zeta function, even though that only is based periodic orbits. So this is the, 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 the zeta function. 
And Ruel resonances are, well, it's a little complicated, but they are among the zeros and poles of this, depends, so depending on you know, how you define this. But, but as I said, it's, it's maybe, uh, I know it's surprising or not, but the information about the zeros and poles contains information and statistical properties. And, uh, and this dynamical data has been studied by many authors. So this is a list of some authors from some closer to physics, many, I mean, but the majority mathematics. And, and you know, here is, for instance, in the case of this type of selection problem, these zeros, the, sorry, the, the Gerard data map the super to but generally it's not. And in fact, Smale, my, my colleague, uh, still live in a conjunction of time ago, and uh, this uh, Zeta function should be metamorphic in the complex plane. And, and, and uh, added this in, in actually the paper and check. But it does not seem particularly shocked in this uh, photograph, but so. Uh, you know, and, and well, this is the definition of also plus. I mean, uh, the conjecture has been proved uh, for an also plus by Juliet Liberani Polico. And then Simon and I gave uh, to us is a simple proof based on the analogy with sketching. Based on various things from propagation of singularities, we, uh, to, to, to matter, among other things. And uh, there is a book, actually, a conjecture of smell was in a different, slightly different setting, which was that axiom A flows would generalize and also flows. So, for instance, this kind of billiard that I showed you, that's more the an and also flow. If you take several complex bodies, then your trap set is very thin, but you still have hyperbricity like, properties, and that's essentially an example of an axiom A. So this, so that includes the axiom A, and then the theorem about the morphic continuation is quite a And somehow the I, I mentioned this this picture here. There is a Gibson scattering theory. What I started with, we have a Schrodinger operator, say, and in that case, this is a one-dimensional picture. We look at the energy surface, psi square plus phi. To me, so that's your undergraduate quantum mechanics. In this case, scattering is, you know, trouble on the part of the energy surface and properties of solutions associated to the part of the energy surface which is not compact. So in this case, X goes to infinity. And, uh, you know, the Forchestral point of view is to sort of look at the problem. Of course, there were preceding. Pre works in dynamical systems, but somehow, at least for us, everything just became very clear after this paper, because they looked at the problem now, like a scattering problem, but now your Hamiltonian is not this, but is, it is this, that's the classical Hamiltonian, and then the non-compactness is in the Xi variable. But the same, maybe not technical, but in technical things uh, apply. And this is a schematic picture of what we did with Simon for our paper. So I'm not going to tell you more, but just to indicate that then they had to do, you can imagine much more by just comparing the two pictures in the axiom. So the overall translation for us, and as I say, uh, uh, this is to us what this, what this kind of, Exciting about the analogy between well resonance plus in open modes is this simple table here. You know, we, we look at the Manoso process, and then the analogy is that the stationary, stationary wave equation uh, is the same as the spectral equation for the for the generator of the flow. So you divide it by i just to make it. Except I'm drawing the case of the conservative Now, in this case, many solutions, the solutions of this 
expression of people cannot be there too. You know, think of plane waves into the eye, lambda x dot omega. They're not, they are not decaying in the middle. Here, the interesting solutions are not smooth because they don't decay as the frequency goes to infinity. And here, you know, you have this energy surface. Here, you just have the symbol of uh, the P, the symbol of the operator x over r. This is what structuring was about. This is what singularity was about. These are the two propagators. And then you have scattering resonances. And, and one of the things, here is that I started by saying that to prove to, to, to define mathematically casinoma marks of scattering resonances, we look at the green function for this problem and look at its metamorphic continuation and then relate it to, to propagation. Here, the first step established first by, by Iran and Suji and other authors of the microbe is to look at the, at the metamorphic continuation of the green function of this operator. And so this is our sort of table of analogies. And there are many kind of applications. So here is my favorite. So it's a short paper that Simon and I wrote in like two weeks. So here's more such papers like that, which is this. Let's suppose you take a a, 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 a a Riemannian, not Riemann surface, so not constant curvature, but negative curvature surface. And then, you know, the, the only object of such a surface is not policy -like. And what to be proved is that the order of vanishing of the zeta function is exactly given in terms of the, the, the this genus. And and uh, it was known in the constant curvature case, but using very rigid methods, some traceable. So, so. And then, uh, you know, there are many follow up results that maybe I can for you, but maybe I'll, uh, well, maybe, you know, so there's lots of things, but I'm probably not the time. Not quite yet. So, so I can tell you more, but maybe you're already ready enough. But, uh, I'll give you an example of consumption to the resonances. So, if you take the following operator on functions of the Gaussian, you take the generator of the generator of the geodesic flow, and you add to it a multiple of what's called a spherical Laplace. So if you were on the surface, so if you're on the surface, you know, at every point, you have the call of the circle bound, circle bound of unit sync directions. In that case, your operator would be just the on, on S. So you see every point in the circle directions. And then you have a natural operator because this has, this has is a circle action on it, so you can naturally do theta. And then in this case, this operator is new and theta squared. And, um, and what, what, uh, what the topic means, so, so this operator, you see, if you consider this as an operator of just acting M2, the domain, the, the natural domain of this operator, one over AI, this space is a semi joint operator in the domain given by functions such that M2 is in M2, and this is in M2 in the distributional sense. And then the spectrum of this operator is a whole group. There's nothing to distribute. This operator is, a, is only in the phase, but however, this operator has the property that it is what's called a hyperliptic operator. And even though it has still its discrete spectrum, and the, and the interest in, and it, it has some supposedly because it would meet this supposedly kinetic value. But what's actually remarkable is that the eigenvalues of this operator, as nu goes to zero, converge to the weather resonances. So this is the viscosity. Interestingly, now I have to say, result like this, this is maybe a good mathematical. I find it very interesting. But now for one point. So 
Suppose I'm going to take the stationary wave equation of SA in Kerr-Sitter or Kerr-Sitter by Paul. And uh, I'm going to add to something which is regularizing at infinity. Uh, so in this case, I think I find the partial plus R mu x squared, something like this. And you can do this by this possibility by Paul, probably. It's not known whether this type of thing is true. And uh, there is a, a, an, analog, an analogous result uh, and for the for the gradient flow of the Riemannian model, you take the gradient flow and you add to it Laplacian. This turns out to be conjugate. This non separatory number is actually conjugate to the Witten Laplacian, which is a separatory number. And in that case, as nu goes to zero, the, the eigenvalues converge to. To resonances of the gradient flow defined sort of using some machinery along the lines. So, this was by Dan Rivière, a special case of a tight function on the sphere, um, which is not quite a smell, but uh, it's done with some very high end uh, field theory motivation that uh, never be explained to me in any way. It was done for by uh, Frank Lewis. So, and there were some other works. There are many other recent applications. Maybe one that um, is most, well, extremely striking is the result of the yeah, moving the fab, okay, which is the following. Suppose you have, you have uh, two, and also two dimension measures with an also clause. And suppose you know, that uh, uh, they have the same mark length spectrum. So length spectrum is just a set of lengths of closed orbits. The mark length spectrum, length spectrum, you also throw in which length you mark it by the homotopy class, which it is because the closed geodesics on the report negatively correspond to homotopy classes. The, and they showed that two metrics like that, that have the same mark length spectrum and are close to each other, have to actually be isometric, which is, which is uh, quite a remarkable part. And, and, and there are many other answers. But as I said, I I feel that um, you know I could not produce an example that as you normal know, most are in fact with resonances for some system, and except for the negatively curved surfaces, I do not know of such a surface. But there is this whole analogy very Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Professor. Those kids, wonderful talk and question. Sorry, I'm asking about the covering of the things. So, so you know, I must confess, I'm not uh, right. Yeah. Uh, nearly so it's a better one. Sorry, uh, it's a better one. Okay, yeah, it's better than a problem. Okay, and just like a beta function, you know, with portion of gamma yeah. functions, yeah, so it has zeros, it, it has four shows for the resonances. Yes. They're passing the uh, high speed states uh -huh. and it has both are zeros. Okay. And the zeros are not the same uh, as in the five uh, not physical thing. Okay. Some, 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 some funny uh, uh, relation with the zeros of this, uh, this amplitude are actually resonant other amplitudes, different orders. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I was thinking in, in this. Okay, so what's the relation with four and zero? You mentioned that the zero was one to zero, where the rest? 
what 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 we are for. No, for the zeta function. Oh, yeah, then for the zeta function. Well, for the zeta, function, you see what happens is that zeta zeta function is given by this sort of super symmetry quotient. Let me give a simplest example. Uh, so, for instance, like I am in dimension two, so we have in the, in the, yeah, the surface, so, so my mind, dimension two. Then the zeta function, the word zeta function, there's a factorization which you know, since I'm looking at the zeta, zeta one, and it's divided by, it depends on the convention. Zeta two, yes, something like that. And this, each of these zeta functions corresponds to an op the operator, which essentially is the key derivative of the of the of the genus of the basic plot on certain uh, on, on not on functions but on forms and then the zeros well zeros will come from the zeros of this guys and poles will come from the zeros of this guys and these are the real resonances of this operator acting on not on function, but on forms with a little twist to uh, the forms. So, so, so the zeros of theta are the yes. So that's the rule. See, this is the actual. See, this function is a nice problem. That this is just given in terms of the length spectrum. This is only given in terms of the length spectrum. Nothing else. These guys here come from operators acting on different spaces. Of functions and then the zeros come from this R M spectrum that like discussion as interpretation inter uh, as, as poles of the result or in terms of expansion though we have different not fully simple functions expansions uh, or correlations but the flows acting on forms is by this time. So I don't know if it answers your question, but there is some structure like that. that uh, may, you know, that, that you, 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 this is kind of, well, I don't use fancy words, but this is simply sort of a super trace type of, or is an expression that determinant using traces of exterior powers. And then you, from that, you get this type of factorization, and then each piece, if you know what is the interpretation of those zeros of the spectrum, I don't know if there is any chance for it. But it's uh, not entirely inconceivable because, you know, this almost looks like a, I replaced those zetas by gamma function. <laughs> this is a beta, one of the beta functions. Or maybe a beta function. 